Alyssa, I want to really thank you for your flexibility because I did get a little off um, timing there and it wasn't uh, anybody's fault. It's just a thing that happened. But you being willing to come in just a little bit later takes all the stress off. So I appreciate it. Now you're self muted. And if you want to unmute yourself, I'm going to go ahead and make you a presenter so you can share your screen. But I, I want to um, tell folks, uh, Melissa is the founder and owner of an international education company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. And the stock, the, the, the message that she teaches, she invented it and she owns it. It's unique to the stock swish. The method is based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. And I know she's going to tell us more about it. Welcome, my friend. I appreciate you coming back and uh, presenting with us today. And I want to make you organizer too. So give me three more seconds. It's going to knock your mic out for just a second. And then three seconds. I've counted it out. It's like three seconds. Okay. So it asks. Testing. 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 You're back. Can you hear me? You're back. Yes, you're back. How are you? I'm terrific, with the exception of the fact that I can barely see out of my window with the Canadian wildfires in New York City. <laughs> oh, my. Other That's right. The... You're in New York. You're yeah. on Eastern time. I, I don't know. Well, yes, I do. <sighs> I have this amazing sinus headache, and uh, it really affects everything. So I appreciate everybody bearing with me <laughs> <laughs> today because I've been tongue-tied all day, and I can't tell time, and I don't know time zones. So thank goodness Melissa does. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. It was nice to be here. Nice to see everyone. And I'm um, going to mute and myself. And Can you hear me? Yes, I'm okay. just saying I'm going to get I'm going to stop talking and you take it away. OK, great. So as I was saying, welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh, and I do live in New York City. So if you've been following the news, New York has been in the news the last few days. Tuesday, I looked outside. I thought it was raining, and then I started to smell this burning. I thought somebody was burning their dinner, and, and I called downstairs to the concierge, and he said, no, Melissa, it's the smoke outside. And... Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, now we I have not left my apartment. We have had the Canadian wildfires have traveled all the way down the, the whole East Coast, actually. So it's in other states as well. So I'm lucky that I work from home. I'm lucky that I'm here with you today uh, speaking to you from my office from home in my apart apartment in Manhattan. And I'm lucky that I could trade and make money Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday without having to go out and um, deal with the air quality in the city, which has been really difficult for people. So, and I pity the animals, the birds in Central Park, because they're they're stuck outside with the with the smoke. But today we are going to talk about how you can make fast profits trading 30 minutes a day. We will be talking about day trading, and we will be talking about options, both of which I do. But they're all based on a strategy that I developed, which is called the Golden Gap. And we will talk about that as well. And we're mostly going to talk today about shorts. So if you have any questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929 gap You can follow me on twi Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And actually talking about uh, the fires. I did a few videos yesterday, and I posted them to my YouTube if you want to see uh, what the skyline looked at looked like yesterday in Manhattan. It was pretty pretty interesting. It was it was orange almost red. So I put different lectures and webinars and sometimes trading room videos on my YouTube site. It's a good YouTube site to go to. I've even been taking videos of Central Park and putting them in there. So it's kind of a little bit of getting to know me and also getting to know the swoosh and what I do. And I also appear on television. For those of you that know, I appear on Fox News, News Nation, CBS News, Newsmax, pretty much every channel I am on where I discuss the stock market, I discuss the economy. Now, next week will be a big week for the market. Why? Because the Fed is a meeting. My take on next week is that the Fed will raise rates a quarter percent. We're rallying today, at least we were before I started talking here, and that is because we had bad economic data this morning, 
and now people think that the Fed is not going to raise rates next week or hoping that they don't. That is not my take. It remains to be seen. We'll see what happens. Again, next week will be a very big week for the market. Now, can you earn a living in the stock market as a professional trader? The answer is yes. If you've been trading for a while, you know that it's not as easy as you think where you just start trading one day, never trading your life, and all of a sudden make money, and bing, bam, boom, you're successful. Usually for people, this, the path to success is just that. It is a path. It is a process. It's 10 steps forward, three steps back, five steps forward, one step back. It was that way for me. It is that way for everyone. There's very few people that start out trading. The first trade that they take, they make money and they never look back. Okay, that would be like what I would call an anomaly. Actually, something like these wildfires where the, it's affecting the whole East Coast, like an anomaly. Something strange that doesn't happen all the time. Your expectation as someone that wants to learn how to trade should be that you have goals. Your goal may be to be successful as a trader, to work for yourself, to work from home like I do, to make money in the market, and then you need a plan of action. How are you going to achieve those goals? How are you going to make that happen, okay? Again, very often it takes steps, baby steps, step one, two, three, something like that. And again, this is what I help people to do. So I put in here that last month's results, we just started this first week of June, we just started June, and June is, again, going to be a crazy month because of the Fed, but May was a good month, too. Uh, these were the room results for the month of May in the Stocks Will Show live trading room. We were closed for a few days from Memorial Day, but the average risk per trade, these are equity trades, these are day trades on margin, was $2,800 a trade. These were all the trades we did, and the results for the room, 59912 for May. This risk, you can risk less than 2800 per trade. These are trades on margin. You may want to do options. We will talk about options too. You can risk more than $2,800, but we had a good month, okay? Most of the trades were shorts, and we will talk about those today too. So when people come to me and they say, you know, how do you do it? How do you make it happen? You know, how do you become successful? Why, in fact, do many people find trading success so elusive? Point in fact, many people trade the market and they don't have any thought process behind why they're taking the trades. They'll just take crap shoots, almost like they're gambling, with a 50-50 chance of working or losing, and they don't have a set strategy that they use to trade. So today's markets, you can't trade like that and expect success. Some people right now will think they can short everything and anything in the market especially people thought that last year in 2022. That's not true. Wasn't true last year either, by the way. Some people think you can go long everything right now. Why? We've been rallying. Actually, if you go to the first day of the year in January, first day of the market open, till now the market is up for the year for 2023. But that, again, that doesn't mean that we're never going to drop again. It doesn't mean you can go long everything. It, that's not the case, okay? <laughs> again, what I do is I get up every single morning and I just take it day by day. I look at the gap, I rate the gap, I look at the market, and I have a system where I rate the gap. If the gap rate's good, I do it. If it doesn't rate good, then I don't do it. Or I don't do anything that day. You take it day by day. In this type of market environment, that's the best thing to do. And also to do fast trades where you take the trade, you're up, you get out. You get in, get out, get in, get out, okay? The one thing I do know, though, is that gap trading is very powerful, and we will go over what a gap is in a minute. But in my opinion, it's the only way to make money in the market consistently in any type of market environment, but particularly this market environment, which I would term as choppy or sideways. Okay, that's how I would describe the market if I were on TV today. And, and some people would disagree with me. But the fact is that gaps are very powerful. Many people don't know how to trade them. My strategy is on gaps, and that's what I teach in my class. And one of the reasons my class is so special is because gap trading is such a niche. Most people don't know how to trade gaps. They're very powerful, okay, as a strategy and a system. And most people don't understand them or have an incorrect understanding of them and therefore shy away from them when they shouldn't because actually you can make a lot of money trading gaps, okay? <laughs> and any questions as we go along here, um, you can plop it in the room. 
Steve's saying, "Ugh, the smoke." Yeah, it's interesting. Steve, you should go to my YouTube and look at this. Look at the smoke videos. Anyways, having a strategy to focus on daily is very important. Okay. Also, no distractions. So when I get up in the morning, I'm throwing a bullseye. Boom. And that's what I'm looking to do. Hit a bullseye every day. One trade a day, preferably, or two, but one for the most part. Okay. I'm trying to do one trade or two trades a day, if that. So when I get into it, when I'm actually, actually, you know, going after something, if I take one trade and I'm up in the trade like that, I'm probably done. It's rare that I would do two trades a day. So let's talk about what is a gap. A stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Guess what? Most things gap on, on every day, but not everything is what I would call a golden gap or a gap that you can predict the next direction. So when I say a golden gap, it means it meets my criteria to trade the gap. And just listen to me. To trade the gap in the direction of the gap. So if I see something gapping down, I rate it. We did mu today. You can look it up. We'll, we'll talk about the mu trade here later. Mu gap down. Mu was a short, okay? So we did a fast trade in mu, we shorted it, we got in, got out. We short as a day trade, I also called a put, okay? So, not everything that gaps down can you short. Not everything that gaps up can you go long. But that's what I'm trying to look for, the good ones, okay? So how am I breaking it down? I'm looking for the institutional money, the footprints of institutional money that come into a stock where you will see what? Buying or selling. When the buying or selling comes in, you obviously want to take it in the direction that the institutional money is taking that stock or ETF. Again, we do the SPY, we do the QQQs, we do ETFs. What does it look like? It looks like power, okay? Power, which is what? Which is money, okay? And again, if you had a lot of money, you could take a position, you could ride it out. You could ride it out till it goes for days or weeks or months or years, okay? If you don't have a lot of money to just ride something out, buying the stock outright or shorting the stock outright, you have to be very uh, nimble, okay, in your trades and you're in and out on margin or you're in and out in a quick option trade. Because again, you don't have a lot of time to wait, 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 wait for the market or the stock to go. You're trying to get a large move. It's called momentum. And you want to get it big, fast, quick, boom. And one of the reasons that I prefer shorting and I like shorting over everything else is because short moves are moves to the downside. And again, music an example today happens quickly. Why? Because people tend to not ask questions when a stock is down. Sell first ask questions later. So moves to the downside selling happen faster than moves to the upside, okay? Like for example, the market. If you're not long the market right now, there's no emergency for you to go long. You can think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it, we're nowhere near the highs. We may not go over the highs this year. In fact, I don't think we do. I don't think the market makes a brand new all-time high. This year in 2023, we have six and a half months left to go approximately it's too late. It's too late for me. And there's too many things against the market on the economic backdrop of the market right now hurting the possibility of that happening. And other things too, like with Russia, Ukraine, uh, banks going under. We're not out of the woods with that yet either, people. But in reference to going long versus shorting, when you go long, okay, again, you're expecting the stock or the market to go up. So the only thing you, way you can make money is if it goes up. Consequently, when we're shorting, we want the stock price to go down. Again, like the mu. Now, here is the mu. This is a one minute chart of mu. Let's go over what a gap is here. So a stock gaps when the opening price and the closing price are different. So mu closed here. Again, this is a one minute chart. We'll look at the daily later. Mu closed here, opened here. So mu closed up here approximately around 67 and change. Boom. Open in the morning here, around 66, 50-ish or so. Fell, dropped, boom. We shorted it, got the drop, boom. You could have held mu all the way down, actually snug as a bug, all the way down in here to 64 
Okay, I got out before 64, which you could have held down to 64. So that was what? An institutional money move, a momentum move to the downside, where you could have gotten a quick trade in and out. Quick means a couple of minutes, half an hour, whatever. Quick doesn't mean days and weeks and months, okay? Again, so if the market rallies, fine, whatever. You got out of the view, you made money, you're done. Boom, you don't care. Do you see the importance of getting a big move, a big move, a fast move, so that you don't have to worry about the market because the market's wiggly jiggly. Now, this was the market, actually. This is QQQs. We did this trade yesterday. We did it late. But anyways, I just want to show you, again, we're talking about momentum. We're talking about momentum to the downside. We're talking about shorting. This was QQQs. High of the day yesterday was around 367 and change. And where do we fall? We fell all the way down. And we actually ended up coming down to 349 and change by the end of the day. So the market was red yesterday and the QQQs fell, sold off, okay? So the momentum, the institutional money and the QQQs yesterday was going where? To the downside, okay? Now, institutional money is always in charge. That's the whole point. It's always in charge. Even if you think it's not there, it is. And so one of the biggest problems with people is they're confused. They're confused because they think, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Institutional money is in charge or it's not, or they don't care, they don't notice, or they want to buy the dip. And they can buy the dip in something and then it fails and they don't understand why. Because it, the, the rally, and I'm just using an example, say for example, wasn't made with institutional money. So institutional money is always in charge, always. Don't make trading hard by trading against institutional money because if you do, you're gonna lose more than you win. Trading with the power is the way that you make money, not against it. So I developed a method where I am spotting institutional money and then trading with it. So you can make your trading life a heck of a lot easier if you trade with institutional money on a regular basis, if you trade momentum on a regular basis. You can take small size then or big size and still have good profits per the risk to reward of the train if you're getting a large move. And again, that's the whole point. Then I'm capturing these moves in a small time frame. Like we just looked at the one minute of the mu and the QQQs. A small time frame on a one minute daily where we're in and out. But it's all about a big flow of money going in a certain direction. That's what moves the market. It's what moves stocks. It creates momentum and then it sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money or really reading the side of power in a stock, you want to be on the side of power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times, even if you think it's not, it is. And that is the striking, striking thing about where the market's at right now, June 8th, 2023, compared to what I was discussing with you about the beginning of January and then also where we're gonna go between now and the end of the year. So what's the assumption? It's a stupid assumption, but it's a stupid assumption because people are saying, well, since we're up on the year, therefore we're gonna continue rallying the rest of the year. Why? That, that, like, that, that assumption makes no sense. And that's why I'm saying it's a stupid assumption because you're basing that on what? Nothing. Things change a lot. And if you don't believe that, then you didn't live through COVID. So, I mean, Stuff happens all the time. And you saw that even this year in reference to some very large, very large banks that went under. So what do you think, and I'm not gonna get into the whole thing off the target there, but what topic here, what do you think is gonna happen if rates do go up next week? There are long-term bonds, okay? There are long-term bonds that large banks bought last year and prior years, last year, but they're holding long-term bonds. And interest rates started moving against these bond positions when rates started going up in 2022, okay? Now, anybody could see rates were going up. Anyone could see that had their eyes wide open that the Fed was going to keep raising rates. Why is the Fed raising rates? Well, the Fed is raising rates because it's the only way that they know how to combat inflation. It's not really working. If you go to the store, if you shop for anything, I don't care what it is, a dozen eggs or a, a washing or washing machine, you know that the price of everything virtually that we buy has gone up in the last 12 months. Now, gas prices may fluctuate. That's based on the price of oil. But I'm just talking about regular things that you buy have gone up. Some have dropped down a bit. Some have gone up more as time goes on. But either way, the level of inflation now is something that we haven't seen 
and some people haven't seen it all in their lifetimes, okay, depending on your age. But, you know, people are talking about the fact that we could go into recession for the end of the year. What does that mean? Should you panic? No. It means that more than ever, you need to take charge of your own life. You need to take charge of your trading. You need to take charge of your money, okay? You need to make good decisions with trades that you take. And unless you have a job where you're going to get a bonus, you're going to get extra money, or you're going to get a raise, you have to take it upon yourself to decide that you're going to trade on the side, which you can do in the morning or doing options on the side, and you can make extra money on top of your regular job because the fact is no one's going to come save you. I mean, when they did that COVID relief program, first of all, not everybody got the money. And second of all, that's not going to happen again. And that didn't save anyone, really. Uh, Steve's talking about he saw inflation in 1981. Yeah, so again, depending on your age, you may have seen periods like this before. Okay, could get better, could get worse. But getting back to banks, banks, large banks are holding bonds now where interest rates have gone against them. If they can follow through and hold the bonds out, it, it, they may make money in the bonds and they may be fine. But once people go in and try to do, try to take their deposits out, and that's what happened to some of these banks. When If everybody goes in and they try to withdraw funds and the money isn't there to cover the uh, assets that they have, that the, then the bank could be upside down. And that's what we saw with some of these institutions. Now, this Fed did step in and they actually made whole more than 250000 in FDIC insurance for, 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 many of the, for many of the depositors. But that would wreak havoc on the market if another bank went under again, because all banks are interconnected and tied together. So it's, we're kind of in a conundrum here, okay? And if you listen to the, the Fed chairman speak a couple of weeks ago, he spoke. He really was flabbergasted. Like he almost didn't even, like he, it was the worst I ever heard him speak in all the years I've been following the market. It was almost like he didn't even know what to say. I mean, it was just like he, he, like you could tell listening to his last speech, like he was kerfluffled, okay? So what does this mean for you? We, you need to learn how to short, okay? Because stocks could tank again. The market could tank again. All right? So things could drop. And way that, while that may not be good for you if you have money invested in the market long term for your IRA, first of all, you could train your IRA because you could buy puts, which are options, which are shorts if you want to. Or you could, if you don't want to trade your IRA, you can open up a trading account, a margin account, or an options account. Again, where you would buy puts or you would short the stock on margin. And you can make money on the side doing that for extra money to ride out the times. Things always get better. Things never stay the same forever, up or down, in the tides. But this is where we're at right now. And you need to be prepared for that. And you need to make good choices for yourself. And you need to make good choices for your trades. So becoming a successful trader or investor requires becoming a specialist in defining whether the institutions are buying or selling a stock. Learning advanced technical analysis required and very important because that's how I make trading decisions. What does this mean? It means reading price action and charts, and that's what I do. But I'm reading it in the gap, okay? So you have to elevate yourself to becoming more consistent with your trading. I have trades that lose. That doesn't mean that I don't make money. I make money because I win in more than I lose. But I absolutely do have losing trades. At the end here, I'm going to show you uh, the stats for the year. You can't expect to win in every trade. And anyone that tells you that they will is completely unrealistic, okay? One of the other things that I think traders struggle with, and again, in today's environment, people, they want answers, they want answers, they want answers, they want answers. The answer is have a plan of action, okay? Have a plan of action to be successful and be patient with yourself to get there. Get on the right path and get on the right track and take the necessary steps to do that. Like I said earlier, 10 steps forward, three steps back, but you're still making progress, which means you start trading now, by the end of the year, you should be up more money than you were today, and so on and so forth. I do not trade any of the Reddit stocks, Kirti, you're mentioning the Reddit stocks, I don't trade them. I think they don't, the charts don't, are all off skew and kilter ever since the pops with the different Reddit things so that there's, there's no technical analysis really that I can apply there that makes sense. I can look at it and tell you I think it's in an uptrend, I think it's in a downtrend if you give me a ticker symbol, but the bottom line is I think they're off for me to trade. That those Reddit uh, reactions to those stocks have actually killed those charts for me. 
I haven't played any of them since that happened. But getting back to what I was talking about here with institutional money, institutional money controls the world. Money controls the world. And as soon as you understand that, then you can participate and you can take advantage of it. It means, that, again, you can go long when the times are good, when the tide is rising, and you can short when it's going the other direction. There's no point in complaining about it or the price of eggs or food or anything else or gas. Complaining and complaining and complaining isn't going to get you anywhere. You need to take the necessary steps and be strong and, and feel like the power is within you because it actually is. You can trade the market. You can open up a trading account. You can take my class. You can do it. So you can change your trading now, even if you're losing. If you lost last year, if you're losing since the beginning of this year, if you've lost trading for the last 10 years, you can start today and you can move forward on a better path, okay? So you have to understand the way money works and the thought processes with money as well. And one of the reasons, again, why shorting can be so profitable is because fear and panic come in quick and fast, okay? And if someone told you that you could make $1,000 in one minute or $1,000 in a day, obviously you'd rather make $1,000 fast in a minute rather than a day or even holding past a couple of days or a couple of weeks, okay? But if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you take the position in the right direction and get out after the move happens for profit. But again, this is all something that I teach in the class when I'm teaching how to short I'm teaching how to rate the gap, and I'm teaching what institutional money looks like. Because spotting institutional money really helps you get those fast moves, and then you don't have to worry about anything else. You don't have to worry about the Fed. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Because again, does really anybody know for sure what they're gonna do? No. I have an idea, okay? I'm probably gonna be right. But at the end of the day, again, how's the market gonna react? So let's say I'm right, they do raise rates a quarter point next week. How's the market gonna react? Between now and Wednesday, we could have a sell-off where that's the reaction before the rate hike. Do you know what I'm saying? It could be like that. So you could have then the meeting and then they raise rates and then the reaction already happened. So you know, you gotta get up every day and watch what's going on. And that's what day trading's all about, okay? So it's about one strategy and one focus to help you in this market. One focus, which is gaps for me. Now this is a short we did, this was BA, this was an option. So if you wanted to sign up for the options newsletter, you get the trade, it gets emailed to you. Time in this trade was sent out at 9.42 on Thursday, May 4th. It was a BA 195 puts. So I send the trade out in the email, you get it, you do it when you get it. So anyways, cost of this was 225, 40 contracts was a 9,000 risk. If you took five, you could have risked 1125, okay? Again, I'm gonna show you this chart in a minute, but this is a put, so this fell, Okay, it was a short where you've gotten, would have gotten in and got out. And no matter how much you risked, whether it was 40 contracts or five contracts, you could have made 109%. I'm looking for 50% to 100% in most of my trades. Okay, that's what I'm trying to get in everything I do. So Thursday, May 4th, here's the BA. So this is BA daily. So stock close your gap down. Again, called the trade pretty early in the morning, sent the email newsletter out, boom. You get in, boom, and it goes. So again, up in here, when I called the trade, snug as a bug, you can see, the stock price was above 200. I called the 195s. It went through that and came down, and it, came, it went through the strike. Very quick, very fast, boom. So again, options are a way to make money trading where you can pay a cheaper price than having to do this on margin. And also you can get in, get out, get in, get out. Okay, so day trading on, on margin is you short the stock. Buying a put is you're buying the put and you are selling it then when you're exiting the trade. And that is something you can have a margin account on cash. <laughs> again, options are not long-term swing trades. You're not taking them and holding them for months and weeks and years and years, okay? That would be like a, a, long, a leap, okay, which is like a long-term option. We're not doing those because we want momentum. So in that BA, we traded momentum. It was momentum to the downside. Here is PayPal. This was a really good trade. PayPal was a huge, huge one for us in the month of May, actually before that even. So I called the $70 puts for PayPal on May 9th. Cost was $225, which is very reasonable. 
Again, you could have shorted the stock outright too. We did do shorts in this in the day trade room. We did do puts on the newsletter too. This was a big one. 189% return investment, 9,000 risk, profit 17. If you risk 11.25, profit 21.25. So let's look at the gap. May 9th, PayPal. And again, if anybody has any questions, let me know. Here we go. Stock closed up here the night before. This was earnings. I remember it well. It was around 75 and change. Boom. So I called the 70 puts. Back what time did I send that out? 9.21, right before the open. And then it fell. This is one of those trades where you couldn't have screwed it up. You couldn't have screwed up your exit in this trade at all. Why? It just went straight down. Do, 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 do. It went straight down every day. And I'm not saying people should, should do this with every single trade. But in this case here, you would have had a better exit in the PayPal if you had even got out of it the last day. Keep going. Um... Can you get a gap play with no earnings happening? Yes, of course. Stocks gap for many, many reasons. The market gaps and it doesn't have earnings. Sometimes the market gaps and it's on news. Sometimes the stock gaps on news. Uh, sometimes something gaps because of a sector gap. So you can have gaps for all kinds of reasons. I'm pointing these out. BA was not uh, earnings. BA, PayPal was earnings. BA, BA was news. So it, it could be whatever that's creating the gap. Anyways, gaps have huge opportunity because they spot power money. And so again, when you're looking to do something and you're looking to try to make as much money as you possibly can as fast as you can because you're not Warren Buffett and you don't have millions and millions of dollars, you have to find that niche. That's something that's gonna allow you to see how I'm gonna get the big move as fast as I possibly can. And, and, and fast means I can then get out of the trade quickly, book the money, and then use that money to take another trade and just keep repeat, repeat, repeat. And that's what we do. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then we're doing the weekly options. Now, how do you find gaps? You find gaps and rate them using a checklist. Gaps have to be qualified. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. Okay. And again, this is what you come and learn from me if you want to learn what I do. But there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock, and it's money. It's not a little bit of money, but a lot of money, or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Power money is in charge right now in the market, even if you think it's not. Trends are set and moved with the power money people, of which was a lot of in the market. And talk about the market that I have not seen this year, just I'd say the last couple of weeks even, like even today. Man, is the volume in the market ETF so low. So again, you have so many pundits on TV saying, oh, the market's so strong, it's so strong. It's so the market, who's, the, who's in the market? Like the market is like, pfft. this This market can't, can't go anywhere. Like there's hardly any, I've never seen this little volume in the market on just a regular Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. You, you, you have a lot of people in the sidelines, is what I'm saying. So to be like all in long, and you're like, wow, that's really, you know. Again, unless you're in for the long term. And you may not want to be all in short either right now, because we're sideways. But the, rea the reality is, we have very low volume. And when I say the market, I mean the QQQ's ETF and the SPY ETF, which is the SPY's ETF for the S&P. So anyways, getting back to gaps. Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps, and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money, which is what I'm looking for every single day. That's what we did in the Mew. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you. You cannot take every gap in the direction of the gap. You cannot take every gap in the opposite direction of the gap either. And some people want to do that. They want to do gap fills. They do not work consistently. Well, sometimes they might, but they don't work consistently, which is why I developed the strategy that I do in the first place, okay? So think intellectually. It's momentum that you need. Also think about what I'm discussing in reference to the idea of shorting, of the idea of going with the institutional money, of the idea of going with the power, 
of the idea that money controls the world, okay? And then, then you won't get so tripped up in it and get in your head about, oh, the market's against me, it's rigged. No, okay. Any questions here as I'm going along? Now, what is momentum? Momentum is a big move that comes into a stock or an ETF, okay? You can make money trading momentum if you get in before the big momentum occurs. Many people can't figure out how to get in early enough and either chase the momentum or take the opposite direction of the move in the hopes of catching some profit. I could call that scalping, for example. Momentum to the upside happens when people are going long and momentum to the downside happens when people are selling or shorting, okay? So yesterday we shorted the market it fell boom we fell into the close basically okay um is momentum a day trade momentum could be a day trade momentum could be an option momentum is a big move it doesn't matter if it's a day trade or an option what do you mean derek it's both could be it's a big fat red bar if you're short it's a big fat green bar if you're long okay it's a big move could be up could be down follow me so again the whole idea is you're making money playing the momentum the golden gap 26 point rating system pinpoints the direction of power money by reading price it's predicting the price. It's predicting where it's going to go. You need conviction to make money, and having a system gives you conviction. You know, I do these webinars. Sherry mentioned I've, I've done webinars with Sherry before with Traders Exclusive. It's wonderful to be invited to these webinars, and, I, and I've been doing them for years. And when I do them, I give an introduction to a little bit about myself and what I do. But you're not going to learn what I do in one hour. And, and I charge for my class and the information in a two-day class, which is actually uh, 16 hours. A lot of times when I go to these webinars and I do these lectures, you know, I get questions of things. Everybody just, all they care about is making money. The, the thing is that if you want to make money, you got to learn how to do it. <laughs> So that, that could be, you could scratch your head and say, I don't care how to do it. I just want to make money. Tell me what to do. But if you learn what to do, and if you understand what to do, you will do better and you're going to need it. And that's what you need. And so the reality is that while everyone wants to make money and everyone that comes to these webinars wants to make money, and everyone listens to everybody that talks today that wants to make money, I get it but you gotta learn it in order to make the money. It's like someone saying, I wanna be a doctor. Boom, and you go and you apply, <laughs> you apply for a job at the hospital and you never went to medical school, you don't have a clue what you're doing, they're not gonna give you a scalpel and let you perform surgery on anybody. You have to go to school, then you have to go to residency and you have to like, you'll basically have 12 to 13 years of your life it's going to take you to learn how to do it. And then you come out and you graduate and hope you make a lot of money. And you're great at what you do. You don't have to go to school for 12 years to become a professional trader. But I always kind of find it interesting that people assume that you could make all kinds of money trading the market and not have any idea what to do. Would you think that in any other profession at all? No, you wouldn't. In fact, I've been thinking about this in relationship to the, uh, the, the wildfires. Um, I, you know, I was shocked that they didn't ground all the flights in and out of JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark. They did not. They, they canceled a lot of flights. They had some flights going in the last two days. Now, today, I don't know. We're a little bit better air quality today, but we're still, I still have the danger thing on my phone. In fact, let me look right now. I still have the danger thing on my phone unhealthy <laughs> 165 air quality i think at, at one point it was like 300 something yesterday but pilots okay were flying in this weather in that smoke the last two days in new york man can you imagine if you were a passenger on one of those planes you're putting all of your trust into that pilot that he is 
very good at what he does, knows how to fly the plane, had the necessary education and training, you're, you had your life in the guy's hands, okay? Because they had zero visibility, I can tell you. I couldn't see out the window, okay? So they had no visibility, uh, at least coming down to the landing. I don't know how high elevation the smoke went up in the air, but they had to land, so they had to come down to land through the smoke. Every profession that you do requires you to learn. But for some people, I don't know why, with training, they just feel like they can make a lot of money without ever learning. And so then people have to pay for classes and then they're frustrated when they are losing for 10 years, coming to the realization that they have to pay for a class to then move forward and make money. But that's what it is. And the second that you realize and, and make the commitment that you're, you're all into this, you know, by the time I was doing this for a number of years, I said, that's it, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm going to get it. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do it. Blah, I'm not looking back. And I did. It took me longer than I figured out to develop my system. But unless you're going to develop your own system, which takes a lot of cash, a lot of money, and a lot, not, a lot of time, you have to learn someone else's. Not every class out there is good. I'll be the first person to tell you that. I've been doing this a long time. I've been teaching people for 11 years. You must use your intuition and say, I think this person knows what they're talking about. And you take a chance. And you take a chance. And that's what life is all about. I took a chance staying in New York. I lived through COVID. I stayed in New York. I didn't want to leave. I moved. I found a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous apartment. And I'm living along the park. And I'm very, very happy. I'm happy I didn't move. I'm happy I didn't move. So life is about taking risks. Things could have been worse. Things might not have gotten better. You know, so when you're in life and you want to have a good quality life, part of having a good quality life is actually being solidified in your finances where you're not worried about money all the time because it's not going to do you any good and you're going to lose sleep at, sleep at night if you're worried about money. And, and again, people are like, oh my God, it's credit cards, interest rates are going up, mortgage interest rates are going up. Car loan interest rates are going up. Yes, they are. What are you going to do? Never spend any, never spend a dime. Never, never buy a car. Your car breaks down. Never buy anything in a credit card. No, that's not realistic. And that's where coming to a grounded situation with money is understanding that it's okay to spend money. It's okay to spend money and that in fact you can make extra money and that that's where the motivation comes from. So a lot of times people just need to get motivated with the work that needs to be done in order to be successful. And the sooner you come to a realistic expectation of that, the faster you're going to do the work, okay, and the better off you'll be. Because complaining about doing the work is never going to get the work done or complaining about, you know, your situation, whatever it is, um, is never going to get the work done. Okay, like I moved and, and I, although I paid people to pack me and move me, I had to unpack myself. I'm, I'm unpacked. I have every box out of my apartment, but my office where I'm at right now is not situated at all. It's kind of a mess, actually. I've got I've, I've to organize it. I, I mean, I've got I've to do the work. You know, nobody's going to help me. I have to do it. So if you want to trade effectively, you cannot go with the crowd of day traders because many day traders want quick, fast uh, trains where they're going to can risk their whole account, risk the farm, and make all a lot of money like the GME Reddit traders where they think they're going to make millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars with a small risk. That's not realistic. Okay, what is realistic is that you can learn how to do this and you can be successful and you can even start out with a small account and build it over time. You must trade with the amount of money that you have. Again, that is being realistic. And most day traders are not realistic with their goals per the size of their account or their cash. And most day traders are not realistic with the amount of time and expense that it will take, for example, to pay for a class like mine and the time to learn it that they need to be in order to be successful. But if you put the time in, you will learn it. I try to put the time in to clients. I follow up with them after the class, even after they paint. Not a lot of people do that in this industry. I want people to do well. But again, it's the kind of thing where you have to want it. You have to want to be successful. You have to be motivated for yourself. It's your life, okay? 
and you must have an edge to go into the market and shrink. Very, very important. So opportunity steps of daily and gas, which counts to trade for a living if that's what you want to do or you want to make extra money on the side. Either way, I would know your goals. I would know how much time you're going to spend trading a day. I would block it out how much time you're going to spend trading a week. If you look at the time you spend before trading versus actually trading, I actually spend a lot of time prepping in the morning before I trade and very little time trading. So I may take two hours, three hours in the morning when I get up, rating gaps, looking at the market. Doom. Then I might be in and out of a trade in five minutes, ten minutes. So again, this is the opposite of what most people do. What I do is the prep work and then I'm in and out quick. But again, the faster I can be in and out of a trade, the better. Now let's look at this one since we were talking about gaps or we talking about the market. This was a day trade. This is a trade in the SPY that we did. This is before Memorial Day weekend on 524. Now, again, I traded the gap. What happened here? Stock closed here, gap down, fell, boom. So again, this was a short. It was a bearish gap down. It was a short. We shorted it. Entry was 411.80. This was a trade on margin. If you wanted to do an option, what would you have done? I did call an option this day too, but you could have just bought like the 412 puts. They have daily puts now. They have daily uh, QQQ and SPY options. Shares was 3,000, risk 3,000, exit 41065. This kept going. We'll go over the one minute in a minute. You could have made $3,450. Again, you could have also done an option. Now, here was the 24th. So you see this closed here, gap down open here, fell, boom. So it actually kept going. Here was the one minute, okay? So we shorted this and we got the drop, but you could have held it. You see where it went. This is a one minute chart from 524. So we did this as a day trade on margin. I also called a put. Again, puts are good if you cannot, uh, if you don't have a margin account or you can't open a margin account, you don't have the money for a margin account, or you don't want to pay the price of something like the SPY, which is expensive per share per trade. So you can buy, and I'm just you know throwing a number out there, you might buy a put that might cost $4 or $5, depending on what strike in the SPY, versus taking a $412 100 share lot on margin, okay? Now, this was the mu, okay? We did the mu today. Mu was a lot cheaper. So you might have done mu as a day trade, which you call to the room. You might have done mu as an option. Entry was 65.50. This is, again, a, this is a trade I call to the room. I have a live trading room where I call the trades live for the day trades. The options are newsletters, which we started talking about, and I'm going to go over some more of those in a bit. Shares was 4,000, risk was 3,300, exit 64.48, boom. You could have made 4,080. So we shorted the mu, got the drop, and you could have held it all the way down. So I could have made a little bit more in this. I do not always get the best, best, best exit. I'm trying to get the fast train. Again, we talked about the fact the market is very choppy. So this was a day trade in mu. Here is the mu gap. Stock close here, gap down, fell, boom. Okay, see it? So this was a short. And again, this is the one minute on the mu. And again, we've been talking about momentum. This is a momentum to the downside. It's falling, so this is a short. Now, as I was saying, if you want to do options, I have an options newsletter. This is a separate subscription service you can sign up for. You do not have to take the class to sign up for this service. If you want to take the class, you take the class, and then you can do the options too. This was a trade we did that was a really nice gap uh, in UPS. Wednesday, May 3rd, I'll show you the gap. Cost was 250 That's very reasonable, especially for something at this price point, $175 stock per share. It was a 68%. That's good. That's good, people. It doesn't have to be 100% or 200%. It's money, again, in this type of market. You could have made $680 risking 1,000. I think that's a good trade. Again, this is four contracts. Now let's look at the UPS May 3rd. Closed here, gap down, boom. Hmm. There it is. So again, a short, a gap down. You can buy the put on the newsletter. 
you could short it in the room if I call it. Now here's the trades I don't have today's. We did mu today, and we also did LVS, and they both worked. So we did two shorts today, so this number will be larger by, by today, by tomorrow's stats. 294, 242 this year for the day trades. This is not the options, this is the day trades I call in the room, but I do have an options newsletter that I'll talk about in a little bit. This was last year, all of 2022. So we're doing pretty good for the year because Last year was 651.079 for the whole year, which was here. And I did take some, some time off last year because I moved. Average was per trade. These are trades on margin, 2,800. So just to finish up here, you have to have a winning strategy. You have to have good money management. You have to have a good mentor to follow. Time of the day is key to get the momentum. You can do this from home just like me, and you must chunk it out. That means booking money when you're up. I don't have a problem if you want to hold some of position to a larger target, but don't let a good trade, 100% or more, go against you. And in this type of market, you need conviction to trade. It is something else that I discuss in the class. So it's about empowering yourself to trade the market. I teach a class. It is a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. I am focused on shorting. This is a class on bearish gaps. It teaches you support resistance and how to trade power in a chart. And I do this class once a month. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's June 24th to 25th, 9 to 5. Class tuition is $69.99. If you're interested in signing up, you can email me if you want to sign up. I am doing a class pull baby special going on through tomorrow, so your timing is good. If you sign up by June 9th, you will get the trading room free to the end of 2023, the newsletter free to the end of 23 for the options, and five one-hour mentoring sessions with me um, with this special. It is $69.99 normally for the class, and you get these bonuses. The deadline for this is tomorrow. Now, if you're just interested in the options, I'm doing a special for that through Friday. It's $39.99 for six months of the options newsletter. And the deadline for this is tomorrow. You would, this is not a class. You just get the newsletter trades to your email. Um, any questions as I'm going through here, some, some testimonials. Any questions from anyone about anything? This is there. He just joined, actually. He just joined. Any questions from anyone about anything? Any questions from anyone about the class? Any questions from anyone about options or the room? or the special, or gaps, or the market, or anything. I think I'm good with time. You've had a couple of people ask you, um, can you get a gap play with no earning happening? Yes, you can get gaps for many reasons. Could be news. You've had a lot of people making comments. I don't see a gap within the QQQ. These are during your presentation. Um, yeah, you gotta be really careful about the smoke. Yeah, it sounds like Quebec is on fire. I know. I don't understand uh, how they can't get it out. It's crazy. Well, I'm in I'm in northern Ontario, and there are wildfires everywhere. All you have to do is toss a cigarette out on the side of the road, and like Terrible. it just catches. It's so dry up here. So anyway. Well, if anyone has questions that we didn't get to because the next presenter's up, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com, and I will answer your questions directly. And I appreciate you having me, Sherry, and everyone stay safe out I, there. I appreciate you being here, too.